diversity is important to companies. It's a source of creativity and innovation. It recognizes that different points of view are important in a growing multicultural world. Studies show that this idea is gaining momentum around Europe, but studies also show that discrimination is still widespread in the workplace. Between 1993 and 2004, this man who wishes to remain anonymous was a victim of discrimination in France. We'll call him Marc. I was met with great hostility because of my homosexuality. You come back from lunch and on your desktop it says, death to the homo, dirty homo. You're working and you receive anonymous phone calls, death threats, and you're put down, given the worst jobs. And you can, as was the case for me, stay for months and months in a room completely isolated, without work, without seeing anyone. In 2000, two EU directives were introduced. They provided a legal framework to fight against discrimination at work. These guidelines recognized Mark's sexuality and gave him the legal rights to protect himself. Europe demonstrated that homosexuals had the right to respect too. Europe allowed us to defend ourselves in the workplace. I learned very quickly and I used what I learned. After a long, hard fight, Mark won the battle against his tormentors. They were demoted and he received compensation. The European Union has one of the most advanced legal systems in the fight against discrimination. In each country, there is an independent public agency that is responsible for promoting equal opportunities. These organizations make use of the EU directives introduced in 2000. Their role is to help enforce anti-discrimination law. They are now part of a network called Equinet. At its head is Joseph de Witt, who also runs the Centre for Equal Opportunity in Belgium. First, we have to, to make clear to people that they have fundamental right not to be discriminated against. And that they can address, if they have a problem on discrimination, that, that they can address a public body like the equality body to find a solution. We can start an, an investigation on the concrete case. We can talk with all the partners, with the other party, for example, who committed eventually discrimination, to stop the discrimination, to look for some compensation for the victim and to avoid that discrimination takes place again. Legal protection has been introduced in the European Union. There are at least six areas concerning discrimination, including ethnicity, gender, age, sexual orientation, disability and religion. Despite the legal protection, proving discrimination on any of these grounds is often difficult. Yacouba Barry from Burkina Faso is a French citizen. He passed the exam to become a school headmaster. He was very successful, and so between 2007 and 2009, he completed further training as deputy head in a college near Paris. There, he encountered racial discrimination from the head. As soon as she saw me, her first words were, what are you doing? I don't want you here. I will do anything to get rid of you. It was like that for two years. She constantly humiliated and persecuted me. Despite documented evidence of Yacouba's competency and the support of his colleagues, he was denied the right to be a college principal. L'éducation nationale est parmi... The education system is among the institutions that does most in the fight against all forms of discrimination. But in the field, there is sometimes a big gap between the laws and how they are implemented. Yacouba is still waiting for his case to be heard in an administrative court. I'm waiting for justice. Until then, I am suffering. Being refused just for what you are and not for what you do is very difficult. And so quite a lot of people are not wanting to address that situation of discrimination because they feel so offended and so vulnerable that it is a difficult case to, to empower those people to bring a case to an equality body even 
to bring a case before a court. Fighting discrimination encourages the development of diversity policies in companies. Diversity charters have been introduced in most parts of Europe. By signing, companies agree to promote equal opportunities. For over 30 years, Mirtha Casanova fought diversity in the workplace. She founded the European Institute for Managing Diversity in Spain, an NGO that promotes the benefits of diversity throughout Europe. The institute conducted research into discrimination and found there was a large gap between northern and southern European countries. In the, the year 2000, when we did our first research of, of, of diversity in Europe, and one of the stunning results was that uh, the attitude and performance and diversity inclusion in the northern countries uh, was of a 20% of companies were engaged in, in diversity and inclusion, whereas in the southern part of Europe, there was only an awareness of one per thousand. Since then, things have improved, says Mirtha. More and more countries and companies are raising awareness and diversity charters are increasing. The diversity charter is a very successful tool in the creation of awareness because it is a voluntary commitment that companies um, assume. Uh, the reality is that when uh, a charter is, uh, has many signatories in a country, these companies exchange their best practices, they learn from each other, then the movement starts and uh, diversity policies are being implemented. Back in France, the first European country to have adopted a charter for diversity. Among the signatories is the SNCF, the companies and recruiters now receive training on the subject. A specific job was introduced to promote equal opportunities. I don't think that companies today engage in such policies to protect their image. No, diversity is now considered to be truly worthwhile. We introduced an inclusive policy that allows everyone to be recognized, to be valued and be accepted with their contributions, with their differences, with their uniqueness. The company has to make extra efforts to adapt the workplace for disabled people an effort that has paid off for Pierre Vautrin. He manages train schedules and is responsible for leading a team of nine people. We have to find a role where we can be as independent as possible. We can add different perspectives. As a disabled man, my way of thinking can bring something different to my colleagues. I really enjoy my job. Everything is going great and I'm happy. Defending diversity is imperative for businesses today and in the future as people celebrate difference.